Welcome to another edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up. During this program, we will highlight the agenda items presented to the Lakeville City Council at their April 15, 2013 meeting. First highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5C, Parks and Recreation Department Monthly Report. And to give the information regarding this agenda item is Parks and Recreation Director Brett Altergott. All right, this is the Parks and Recreation Department, Department Report from March 2013. Um, we start with the Arts Center. Um, we had a very successful event on March 8th, the Dueling Pianos. It was a, a sellout. Um, it is an e also an event that uh, we're looking at bringing back with the next playbill. So that is something that uh, Tom is working on with the Arts Center right now. Uh, again, it was very well received. The crowd, um, I guess, it, again, I wasn't there because I couldn't get a seat. But um, it was just so well received and we had a, you know, more people inquiring. So we need, definitely want to bring them back. It, it, uh, it's a great event to have. Also at the Arts Center, over the course of two weekends, uh, the Children's Theater, the, the Plays the Thing production, Children's Theater, uh, put on six shows uh, of Charlotte's Web. And as you can see by the numbers, we had uh, just short of 1,200 people attend six performances. So again, very good attendance. Uh, we also changed out the, the main display uh, in the lobby. It's now uh, Lisa Westfall has the exhibit right now um, and she's an Art Center instructor. Uh, if you want to go see the pieces that are there, I encourage you. They're uh, very nice pieces and um, she had a very successful opening night selling a number of pieces that are there. Moving on to park maintenance, snow removal, um, and unfortunately that still continues, but we had four snow events um, and we also did some tree trimming. Um, but as reported in, in previous months, uh, the park maintenance, we do a lot of trail clearing. Um, so with any event, we get out there. As you can see uh, in the picture, um, there's a V plow on, and that allows us to get out and keep those trails clear. We try to stay ahead of the ball game so we can use the plows versus blowers. So you can tell with the, all the number of events that we had, we were out there um, at least four times. And um, that's, it's an effort to get 100 miles of trail clear. Uh, park maintenance also repaired field striping equipment um, as time allowed um, and then we worked on our pontoon which we use on Lake Marion for moving the fishing piers in and out and also assisting uh, with the buoys during the year. Um, so there's again minor maintenance needed there um, and then the, we constructed a, a sprayer for Roundup to help us get through the parks quicker than having the backpack. Uh, continuing on, we did some carpet cleaning in buildings, uh, got our barrels ready for the, the season, some of the new barrels that came in, replacing them, getting more out in our system. Um, again, all those things happen behind the scenes and, and usually, you know, as we're preparing and we have that little bit of time as snow is supposed to be melting, that allows us to get a jump on some things moving into the spring season. Um, there is still time to order trees and shrubs. Um, through April 22nd, so that's this Friday at the close of business, which is 4.30, uh, for pickup on the 28th. And as of today, uh, we ran the numbers at 3.30. Um, as you probably would expect with the weather, numbers are down. We sold 137 trees and shrubs. Um, kind of give you an idea, our high in 2009 was our highest year with 520 trees. Uh, last year combined between trees and sub shrubs was 427. So weather is definitely having an impact because they come bare roots. So I think a lot of people are saying, can I even get it in the ground? Um, but realize it's still two weeks away from delivery. So, you, you know, hopefully the weather will cooperate. You'll be able to get that tree planted. But again, we're taking those orders through uh, this Friday. Um, as far as recreation, um, they've been interviewing their staff, their summer seasonal staff uh, for like the puppet wig and um, all the different programs at Ritter, things of that nature. Um, so that was, Patty and Dan were busy with that. We've also had 150 register for the Learn to Skate at the arenas. Uh, summer athletic leagues are forming. The softball was supposed to start this week. Um, we have a delay on that. Um, <laughs> and the brochure was mailed out and delivered uh, the week of March 23rd. Also uh, on that week, um, March 23rd, we had the Easter egg scramble and breakfast. Um, again, it was a fun event. I attended with my family uh, for the first time. Um, it was what we most enjoyed was being downtown and going into the local businesses. Um, like you know, it's a great opportunity for people who don't know about the downtown um, to go down there and and actually get inside these these businesses that they might not otherwise go see. Uh, we had 81 attend the event again. It's joint with the DLBA, um, and so it started at the Heritage Center, which has been different. It's been at the Senior Center in the past, so we had breakfast at the Heritage Center in two shifts, 
and then um, there was a map of, of activities downtown. So far, revenue through March, um, looking at last year, we're, we're a little bit down, but there are some things that skew that. Um, adult softball is yet to be entered. Um, we have some summer program donations that are still coming in, and our advertisements were a little down, but we have taken more in even since last week when this was produced. So um, we'll keep an eye on that throughout the year, but our goal is to keep our revenues um, as steady as possible uh, you know, from year to year and not see wild swings. But depending on when things come in, you have ebbs and flows throughout the year. So I think it's more important to kind of see where we're at, benchmark about the six month, and then, um, you know, as, of course, as we get into third quarter, we'll get a better handle on that. Uh, but our, the positive is our facility reservations are up. You know, some of that has to, a little bit to do with the Heritage Center, but um, I, I definitely know there are people that are calling to get our shelters throughout our park system, planning their family reunions or birthday parties. Um, so we're very encouraged by that, and that number will continue to increase throughout the year and, until that we just can't hit every weekend or every event that people would like. Seniors, uh, 20 new members in March, so our total for the year, um, although it kind of goes through April, so you'll still see some additional. We're at 979. The new calendar for the, the, the registration for the senior club is May 1st. So you're gonna see it kind of, April won't be a lot, so you'll see that, that counter start up again in May. So that's, that's pretty good, pretty good numbers this last year. Um, in March 20th, we did a new program. We had an afternoon dance, and it was a catered, catered event by Rascals. Um, and it was well attended, and these dances go to different communities in the metro area, so it was our turn. Uh, again, well received, they're trying to build a base of people that go from each community. Um, and so that way, you know, if you're from Apple Valley, they're also coming here to Lakeville, and our people are going there. So I think there's uh, three, four communities right in this area. Also on March 14th, they had the healthy cooking class uh, taught by dietitians uh, from Family Fresh Market. Uh, it's a new program that Linda ran um, that she said was uh, extremely well received. Again, talking about um, preparing healthy meals, um, especially for seniors, um, that's, a, that's a key component. Uh, and then they had their annual men's golf meeting. Um, this is something we talked about at the end of the first quarter is here. Heritage Center donations through the first quarter um, are a little over $6,300. Um, donations to date total, we've fundraised 147,475. And the balance to be fundraised, we have 131,000 and some change to do, 131, 188 remaining. Um, and we have a number of events planned throughout the year. And we hope to have that number somewhere around uh, at least down to 90,000 or less by the end of this year. So we'll, we'll keep plugging away those events and in, in, at the end of the second quarter, um, you'll see some of those events will have taken place that'll have an effect and, and drive that number down. Uh, I think large number of the events will happen in the fall. The big ones, we have summer splash in the summer, but the auction and things that'll probably uh, have the biggest impact on lowering this number are more September, October events. So it's kind of bringing you up to speed on that. Um, Ken, and just a project that's coming, some of you have asked, but the Kenrick Trail, right now, <clears throat> um, it's the anticipated timeline after talking with our consultants is that we'll advertise either late April, early May, which would set up a bid opening in early June, which would um, having us, have us bringing those, any recommendations before the city council, um, June 17th. So that's a timeline um, as of last week. That's, antici that's anticipating that uh, some of the delays that we had in the review process from MnDOT, that we don't hit any delays again, um, that, ever, that what's there um, is either approved or, or minor modifications, and then that can be moved forward through the bid process. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5D, Police Department Annual Report. And to give the information regarding this agenda item is Chief of Police Tom Von Hoff. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. It's my pleasure to present the 2012 annual Lakeville Police Department report. And I'd call your attention to the uh, screen here. This is a, a time exposure uh, photo taken by uh, Officer Adam McDonald uh, one night. Adam, of course, is uh, one of our uh, crime scene unit officers, and they receive extensive training in photography. And I thought it was just kind of a neat picture. We're dedicating this report to uh, one of our canines, Shadow, who retired in 2012 and uh, now is uh, living the retired life uh, with Officer <laughs> Loeffler, his canine partner. Um, in the back, I brought my own cheering section as well, uh, like Mr. Starfield, 
I have uh, Captain uh, John Arvidsson in the back and uh, Captain uh, Tim Knutson. Um, and uh, I'd like to recognize both of them for uh, assisting me along with Captain Manius and being part of our command team that uh, is uh, really largely uh, responsible for, along with all the other employees, uh, men and women of the police department, in uh, providing the results for uh, this year's annual report. Our mission statement, in partnership with the community, we are dedicated to reducing crime, problem solving, and ensuring the quality of life in Lakeville. And what are our values? Work hard, have fun, take responsibility, and maintain a healthy balance. And our vision, how we rate ourselves to be regarded by our community and our profession as the premier law enforcement agency in this state. And looking at the last five years, you see the population um, in Lakeville has increased from 54,076 to 57,740. Um, and you take, uh, those are five call areas, medical emergencies, animal related calls, alarms, suspicions, and uh, those call areas and phone calls kind of give you an idea of where our, those are some of our most uh, frequent incidents and high incidence categories. And they give you an idea of uh, where our calls have been going in the past couple of years. Suspicion calls are up, alarm calls are down, animal related calls are just up in the past year, and medical emergencies are up as well. Our CAD incidents went up to 38,893 incidents. Of course, CAD is computer aided dispatch. It gives us kind of an idea of total activity. You'll also notice that uh, peak there, that purple graph, and right in July there, that month is over 4,400 calls. It's a, a peak month uh, last July. We haven't seen a month like that uh, in the recent past. And uh, so we are seeing uh, the number of average calls go up, um, but we do have uh, much good news in this report. Our part one crimes, which are our most serious crimes, declined 3% in the past year. 803 part one crimes were uh, reported in 2000, or 778 part one crimes were reported in 2012 versus 803 in 2011. That's a 3% decrease. That's uh, from our peak in 2006 of 1,193 part one crimes, that's a 34.8% decrease. In six years, our, our part one crimes have gone down uh, significantly. And I'll talk about that as we move through the report. Likewise, our part two crimes are less serious, more property crimes, minor assaults, decreased 8% in the past year, from 1,254 part two crimes in 2011 to 1,206 part two crimes in 2012. And that's down from 1,773 part two crimes in 2004, a 32% decrease. And we believe that that's largely a result of uh, a lot of the policies that we have done. Now, and, and uh, one of the things is uh, that nationally crime has declined in both part one and part two crimes across the country. But uh, we're even accelerating beyond the uh, national rate of that. As a result of that, um, in just this year, we received an award based on uh, 2011 uh, statistics on, uh, from the, you know, you, uh, the UCR crime which is a universal crime report uh, for cities over 25,000 people in comparison to the population of our city to both property and violent crime, the 86th uh, safest city in America. This is the first time in the history of the police department, in the history of Lakeville, that we have been um, in uh, so recognized uh, by this group, and that's by Neighborhood Scout, which is a private organization. Um, and how do we do that? Well, a couple different ways. One of the uh, initiatives that we started this year was uh, the joint partnership uh, with Dakota County Community Corrections. And uh, we now have office space, um, which uh, was a recording room at one point, um, where we allow probation officers to office uh, on a part-time basis to meet their clients in, in our office. And they also uh, uh, team up with two of our patrol officers, Sandy Taney and Troy Hokinson, and they go out and uh, meet their clients. As a result of that, uh, we've made uh, multiple arrests, and this is just in the last quarter of 2012 when this started. They had three arrests already, and I know we've made more arrests since then. Um, but it helps to make our community a safer place. Uh, community Corrections uh, has been, uh, the probation officers have been very happy to make this connection. And we're the first department in the county to be uh, doing this type of a, a, a proactive approach with this. Another thing that we do is our traffic safety. You know that I report every month on our traffic safety unit. Um, for most of the year, Officer Nick Stevens was our traffic safety officer, and uh, Adam Steyer took over in September of 2012. And the traffic safety officers are, are part of the responsiveness in our department. They respond to all the uh, traffic uh, concerns that we get throughout the community and do directed uh, traffic enforcement. They also work on, on special uh, projects like increasing seatbelt compliance or uh, 
uh, DWI compliance as well. We also have our street crimes unit. And I found this graph particularly interesting because this started in September of 2011, goes through February of this year. And uh, the street crimes unit focuses on those type of crimes that uh, really deal with our street level offenders. And so you see traffic violations, drug paraphernalia, possession of marijuana, alcohol and tobacco, felony drug offenses, theft and trespassing as uh, some of the areas. Interestingly, there, they also did 25 search warrants. Now when the cases go into larger quantities of narcotics and drugs, then it's passed off to our drug task force officer. Um, and how it breaks down in Lakeville, if you want to know a little bit about uh, the types of uh, abuse of, or drugs that are abused in Lakeville, um, out of the 25 uh, felony level cases that the uh, street crimes unit did in that time, uh, nine were methamphetamine, eight were marijuana, three were heroin, and uh, two were prescription, and three were other drugs as well. So it's kind of how it breaks down. Uh, and how does that uh, look next to our, our Drug Partnership Dakota County Drug Task Force? which does about eight, uh, 735 arrests each year and 200 search warrants. If you look at their uh, arrest by drug type, you see it's almost the same percentages, with 33% uh, methamphetamine, 28% marijuana, 15% uh, prescription drugs. They have a little bit higher prescription drug uh, percentage, and 11% uh, heroin, and uh, just 3% uh, ecstasy, which is uh, a little bit less than it's been in the past. Getting back to our, our department with our K-9 unit, our two K-9 teams, Officer Chad Loeffler and Tank. Tank is a, a new member to the department, a Belgian Malinois. It's the first time we've had such a dog. Um, we've always used German Shepherds in our uh, K-9s. And then, of course, Officer Jason Jensen and Zeus. And uh, this year we celebrated our 25-year celebration of our police K-9 service. Our uh, five teams, Dakota and Officer Tom, or Tom Hakla, Buster, and Officer John Arvidson, Cuff Key, and Officer Beth Eilers, Blue, and Sergeant uh, Brigham Stroll, Shadow, and Officer Chad Loeffler, and Zeus, and Officer Jason Jensen are the uh, teams that make up the 25 years between 1986 and 2011. We uh, did have these uh, memorial pins made. Of course, we had a celebration. You see just some of the trophies that our K-9 team uh, got together and a cake, and then you see our, uh, our mirror, uh, <laughs> mirror little there, uh, um, just uh, getting to know uh, Shadow before he retires, and there he got to know him a little bit better. <laughs> um, but uh, the, probably the most depressing thing about this picture is you look at the date on this picture and look at the uh, trees in the background <laughs> and the grass there. <laughs> so what a difference one year can make. Uh, we also have our lab, our uh, computer forensics lab, cybercrime, uh, just some statistics, 75 million uh, scam emails. Uh, resulting in 2,000 victims every day. 73% of Americans have experienced some form of cybercrime. 46% uh, of online adults have been victims of cybercrime. 20% uh, of all internet pornography involves children. Um, and then 4% of all 10 to 17 year olds receive aggressive sexual solic solicitation each year. Um, this lab is uh, um, uh, fully functioning now. Uh, we just did a search warrant, um, and there were 22 computers seized on that single search warrant. Um, and we're, we're aggressively working on these cases. And um, as I've said before, nearly every one of our cases has a uh, nexus um, to either a smartphone or a computer that makes this lab very valuable. And this is part of modern law enforcement agencies uh, being effective. I have a couple of cases, and it's really difficult to pick out cases through the year, but uh, I thought these four were kind of uh, symbolic anyways of, of, of what we've seen over the year. The one up in the upper left-hand corner was a, a situation uh, where some uh, citizens saw uh, some people breaking into a car. They got a good description of the vehicle. The vehicle was located by a Scott County deputy uh, not long after and uh, stopped. We were able to, uh, our officers joined up with the deputy and we're able to clear multiple uh, thefts from vehicles cases. The upper right-hand corner there is a uh, property that was recovered after a neighbor saw um, some people exiting a neighbor's residence. They called, got a description of the vehicle, we stopped the vehicle and arrested two burglary suspects. The one on the lower left uh, is a arson case um, where uh, there was uh, a couple of uh, individuals who were uh, going out committing arsons. In this one you see they had stuffed uh, um, uh, really uh, firecrackers and, and, and items trying to ignite that vehicle there and uh, I mean, when they were unsuccessful in their attempt to do that. They did start a fire on the vehicle, but it was extinguished. Um, those uh, individuals were uh, 
uh, were located and charged uh, by uh, School Resource Officer Williams and Detective Dave Watson. And finally, at the bottom, as you can see, we're a full service agency, and Officer Nick Stevens uh, um, was on patrol, and uh, there was a, a, a people who were stranded out in the middle of Lake Marion, and uh, he went to the shore and, and with the assistance of a, uh, a boater there, was able to go out and rescue them. And so this picture was taken as he was coming back in to shore. So we do just about everything when it comes to those things. Um, one of the things, a, a big thing that happened was a windstorm came through on June 19th, and uh, you know the uh, Public Works Department and the Fire Department did an outstanding job in this. Um, our, our resources were fully taxed, um, but it was a remarkable uh, effort by this entire city when you would go out there, and uh, these pictures were taken, I, I took some of these myself, at uh, between 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning, and within hours, literally, these areas were cleaned up, and you can see the amount of debris um, at the parking at the parking lot at our central maintenance facility there, and uh, a lot of the straight line winds, uh, the uh, house damage there, that was all on one street, and a lot of the straight line winds came through and blew in garage doors and then blew out the walls adjacent to them. Uh, fortunately, uh, there was no one injured in this uh, storm, um, but it did uh, knock down a bunch of trees, and, and uh, like I said, the uh, Public Works Department just did an outstanding job, and the whole city came together. We did activate our, our EOC, Emergency Operations Center, for a short time uh, during this uh, event, um, and uh, it was just uh, went very well for an event that started at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Lakeville Night to Unite uh, 2012, you see Officer Jessica Swanner there, Sergeant uh, Jim Punchakar and Jim uh, Stevens down below there. Um, 75 parties across the city, literally thousands of our re residents and uh, 75 of our neighborhoods uh, get involved with this. Uh, we partner with the fire department and city council members all come out and, and, uh, and really get to, to see our citizens meet with them. A very popular event in our community and uh, one of the reasons that Lakeville is such a, a, a safe community is because we have such strong neighborhoods and it just is borne out when uh, we uh, go on these and the officers go out and the firefighters go out and we meet and talk with the residents and uh, they're really the reason that uh, we do so well. They call over 2,200 times in the past year reporting suspicious activity and that's the key to a lot of our success. Uh, working with our community, we do our uh, department does a lot of uh, events up in the upper right hand corner there you see a, a part of our night crew uh, that uh, we're ringing the bell in front of Fleet Farm. Um, there was another event that we were doing uh, at Fleet Farm for Salvation Army as well. Of course we did Movember in the department, 26 members of the department participated in that raising over $4,000. Uh, uh, we also do uh, um, participate in the Polar Plunge. Uh, down below there, and uh, that event, uh, the South Metro event, raises $200,000. Um, and then, of course, uh, our partnership with 360s Communities. And you see Senator Klobuchar there, who was the uh, guest speaker in 2012 um, for our, the Domestic Abuse Awareness Lunch, which is really one of the premier uh, events in the uh, metro area and in the state of Minnesota for drawing attention to domestic violence in our communities. A number of the awards and accomplishments that uh, many here in the council are well aware of. Uh, Governor Dayton, of course, came in the first uh, council meeting of 2012 and uh, presented the uh, Chief's Award of Merit to Officer Michelle Roberts and Officer Jeff Hansen for their work in uh, um, uh, rescuing a person from a uh, vehicle crash and uh, working on that. And there was a, a number of other officers also sitting there that uh, the governor was gracious enough to uh, to be part of the presentation uh, ceremony. Um, officer Andy Henches, of course, was recognized by Minnesota MAD School Resource Officer of the Year for 2012. Uh, officer Adam Steyer also received an award for outstanding <coughs> service, and there was also a DWI All-Star. Detective Dave Watson received a medal commendation. Officer Rick Bussler uh, received an LPD Journal Host Award um, for his 10 years of service as the LB LPD Journal Host. Um, a show that uh, received uh, certainly regional and even national uh, recognition. And uh, Officer Troy Hokinson and Detective Brad Paulson are, are there at a BCA management course graduation. Uh, they went through a series of courses over 80 hours at the BCA. And they're there with our uh, Director of uh, State Minnesota, State of Minnesota Director of Public Safety, Mona Doman, and uh, the Superintendent of the BCA, Wade Setter. Of course, we couldn't do what we could do without our volunteers. 
uh, our reserves, so our reserve unit, uh, who donate almost two or 4,000 hours a year. Um, our chaplain, uh, Mark Bellows, um, who donates his time as a chaplain and, and giving uh, uh, chaplaincy services to both the department and members of our community. And officer, or Heidi Crane, the captain on the reserve, who was the uh, LPD uh, uh, reserve of the year for 2012 as well. And uh, like I said, we could not achieve our mission without their assistance through the year. And our uh, citizens, uh, Greg Bowl, Bowl uh, from uh, uh, Country View Mobile Home Community, and Kathleen Chugel uh, uh, from the uh, Dodd Court Apartments, um, working with our, our CRT officers uh, in reducing crime in their neighborhoods. And our CRT officers um, have taken uh, the high crime areas in our city and the areas of uh, high calls and work with the residents, work with uh, property managers at these locations and reduce the number of calls, which has been part of the reason why we have been able to reduce the part one and part two crimes in our community is working together with the community in these areas and uh, this has been very effective. And of course, uh, Leah McScarroll up in the left-hand corner uh, got the Chief's Award of Merit for her life-saving actions in uh, the uh, young boy who uh, drowned and almost drowned um, in the community pool. And finally, uh, celebrating Police Week. Um, of course, uh, every May 15th, uh, we do have Police Week and we uh, have, uh, we open up our, have an open house at LPD. You can see our, our Dakota County uh, Sheriff's partners brought over their fan boat which the sheriff is extremely proud of. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the state patrol uh, brought their helicopter down. And when I talked to the pilot from the helicopter, I said, well, what is your patrol area? Um, because he was actually from Bemidji that he flew down. And he said, the state of Minnesota. So, <laughs> so I said, oh, OK. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the line was there as well. And you can see right down below, uh, Sarah Brockman is a community service officer um, before she was promoted to a uh, patrol officer there with some other prospective uh, LPD officer candidates was part of the uh, day. Mm -hmm. And we also will be having a uh, open house this May 18th, Saturday, May 18th of this year uh, for all of our residents. And we will have equipment displays and uh, we'll try and get the state patrol helicopter again as well from nine to one um, to celebrate police week. And that concludes my report. And I'd just like to thank uh, the council and the mayor um, for your support of the uh, Lakeville Police Department and on behalf of all the men and women of the Lakeville Police Department. Thank you very much. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number eight, conditional use permit for mom brands. And to give the information regarding this agenda item is Community and Economic Development Director Dave Olson. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, Pauline's done a nice job of, of giving the history of uh, uh, Mom Brand's continued expansion since they've uh, uh, relocated their initial technical center to Lakeville, so I won't reiterate that. I'll just hit some of the highlights from the planning um, uh, perspective. And uh, I appreciate, again, uh, Mr. Mori uh, giving me, I, have, I haven't uh, written a conditional use permit in a while, uh, report in a while, but uh, Daryl had enough confidence in me to let me give it another try. So. Uh, uh, Appreciate that opportunity, and uh, the uh, as Pauline indicated, the uh, the conditional use permit is to uh, basically uh, combine parcels and then develop these two these two lots that were previously on two parcels as one. And uh, we'll get into the site plan. Hopefully, you've had a chance to review those uh, in your uh, in your packet over the weekend. But uh, uh, what what they are now referring to is is. Uh, east and West Building, the uh, former Hearth and Home Building, being the, the West Building, and now the recently acquired former New Morning Building, being the East Building, and hopefully everyone's familiar with this area. This is part of the uh, Fairfield Business Campus that was originally developed by the city in the early 1990s. Uh, we're on second generation businesses in both of these uh, buildings, and um, not too long ago we had uh, Image Trend in here, and uh, they've recently completed an expansion. They're actually right across the street. Uh, also a second generation business uh, in, uh, in the in, in business park and uh, it's, it's been an uh, enjoyable opportunity for me to uh, work on both of these projects. Uh, this is how the property lines sit today and uh, the one thing that uh, coincided with uh, shortly after the purchase 
of the uh, original, which the property line for Arth and Home originally went straight north like the, uh, along uh, this alignment. And uh, shortly after they acquired the uh, enclosed on the uh, uh, former Hearth and Home building in 2009, um, New Morning was still owner, uh, owners of, of their property at that time and made available and uh, uh, Mom Brands, uh, Multimill at that time, acquired four and a half acres uh, of vacant undeveloped land and basically it was to facilitate not only future parking but uh, the possibility of a future building in this area too. And as you know, we went through a process of uh, modification of the uh, uh, conservation easement that existed out in that area to, to facilitate that and that was reviewed by, both by the Planning Commission and City Council. Uh, since that time, obviously, the rest of the New Morning, uh, uh, former New Morning <coughs> property became available and uh, in, in late uh, uh, 2012, uh, Mom Brands was, uh, was able to acquire that building. And so what we'd like, uh, what they're proposing to do now, and, and uh, Pauline was correct, uh, uh, there is a renovation taking place right now uh, of this building and uh, utilizing some of the same techniques that they did in the original hearth and home building whereby uh, precast concrete is inserted inside the building to take uh, warehouse and uh, manufacturing space that has uh, 20, what, 8, 25 foot clear into basically two-story office space. So uh, they were able to do that on the West Building and they're doing the same thing right now on this building. And it's a major, uh, uh, in excess of $4 million renovation of, of this building that's currently taking place. And along with the interior renovation, uh, there'll be some work done on the exterior and they did a nice job on the Hearth and Home Building and, and punching, there wasn't a need for very many windows. Uh, when it was manufacturing and warehouse, but now that's being converted to office space, obviously there's a desire to bring more natural light in. And, and so this is an example of where additional uh, windows, uh, and they've, they've uh, uh, figured out how to uh, modify these uh, precast uh, concrete buildings in such a way that uh, converts and, and changes their usage. And uh, the other thing that will happen to this building is that it will, uh, have a new uh, stucco finish applied to it as well in addition to the new windows that will make it look uh, compatible and similar to the hearth and home building in terms of color anyway. And this is what the plan is uh, why we're here tonight before the council. Uh, the, uh, the parking lots and the, uh, the, uh, the, where the existing property line exists today goes right through the middle of some of these new parking lots that are being proposed and uh, as Pauline indicated, there's a desire to uh, create a green space uh, so that it provides a, a convenient and safe uh, pedestrian access between the two buildings uh, uh, for mom brands. And uh, as a result, what makes sense to, as we did uh, a couple years ago when they attached the four and a half acres to this parcel, now they're basically going to require or request that this, these two parcels and this whole 22 acre uh, almost 22 acre uh, uh, land area be combined into one parcel and, and the ordinance pro provides for multiple buildings. We don't have too many cases where we have a uh, quote unquote campus of multiple buildings on one parcel but the ordinance does, uh, does allow that through the conditional use permit and that's why we're here today. Uh, the, uh, uh, the one thing that is going to change and again there, right now there's ability to tra uh, truck traffic and, and vehicle traffic through the uh, what would be the east side of the former uh, uh, what used to be hearth and home and uh, that truck traffic is now going to be routed around and there's plenty of uh, existing truck docks on the east building and um, they don't receive a lot of deliveries but to the extent that they need to they can still uh, make their way around and um, and uh, get to still to the west building the other thing that is shown kind of in the uh, gray blackish areas uh, additional rain gardens uh, they were uh, uh, very successful in developing a rain garden uh, out here when the additional parking was done on the initial remodeling and, and so uh, I, I will also give Mom Brands credit, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, good stewards in terms of uh, uh, handling uh, the, their site in terms of uh, runoff and, and the uh, area that uh, was graded over here and there was some stormwater facilities that were uh, constructed over here is now being uh, in a process of restored to a prairie type uh, of uh, land cover and uh, the uh, I'm confident the rain gardens that are being added are gonna complement the site as well. 
Planning Commission held a hearing on this on April 4th and uh, recommended uh, unanimous approval of the conditional use permit. There were uh, no, uh, no one in attendance at the, uh, at the Planning Commission meeting, uh, even though there were a considerable number of notices to the adjoining property owners, both within the business park as well as the residential subdivision to the north, uh, and, and no one um, uh, came to the uh, hearing on the uh, fourth and obviously didn't express any uh, statements or concerns. So the action before council tonight is to approve a conditional use permit to uh, approve uh, the uh, multiple buildings on a single parcel and included in that is the adoption of the findings of fact as presented uh, in the packets and uh, included uh, in your packets were the minutes of the April 4th meeting as well as the actual CUP document and findings of fact. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Item number eight was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Well, those were the highlighted items presented to the Council at their April 15, 2013 meeting. If you have any questions or comments regarding these agenda items, please feel free to call City Hall. The number is 952-985-4400. Thanks for watching this edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up. The Lakeville Rotary presents the 11th Annual Taste of Lakeville at the Lakeville Area Arts Center on Thursday, May 16th from 5 to 9 p.m. Enjoy food samples from area restaurants and wine and beer tasting galore. Plus live entertainment and silent auctions. Tickets are $30 in advance or $40 at the door. Proceeds benefit local scholarships and community projects. Check out event details at tasteoflakeville.org.